So by the time most of you see this, Super Tuesday 3 will be over. But before anyone even casts their vote, there were already Democratic Party super fans basically declaring the race all but over. Now, look, admittedly, the numbers didn't look good for Bernie Sanders going into Super Tuesday 3. With that being said, you know, they don't want the process to play out because they want to hurry up and finish it coronate Joe Biden and just allow him to be the nominee and they want us to back down. Um, so this is what they're saying and this is my response and basically my response is what I think Bernie Sanders should say to what will become increasing calls for him to drop out. So Bakari Sellers tweeted, after tonight with no path to secure the nomination, Bernie Sanders should drop out. We should proceed to the mission at hand, beating Trump. We don't have time to waste. Getting beat by 10 points plus, I'm being generous, and getting swept isn't a path to winning anything. Jennifer Rubin tweeted out, Sanders, by remaining in the race, will prevent Biden from assuming control of the DNC, planning for virtual convention and shifting to an unwieldy general election. He needs to exit today. Period. Now, supposedly, Jennifer Rubin is a conservative, but she's really concerned with what's going on in the Democratic Party primary. Now, also, just ask yourself this. If the shoe were on the other foot, would they all be telling Joe Biden to drop out if Bernie Sanders were in this position? Well, no, because after Nevada, when it seemed as if he would secure a plurality of pledged delegates, they were all talking about the prospect of stealing the nomination away from Bernie Sanders at the convention. Everyone in the race, including Elizabeth Warren, said they were going to stay in, rack up as much delegates as they possibly could, and make their case to the superdelegates at the convention. So there was no talk of, you know, letting us focus on the real mission at hand, defeating Donald Trump. They're only saying that now because the guy who they like is winning. These are political hacks. Now, after Super Tuesday 3, we will all see this become more common. More and more Democratic Party loyalists and establishment hacks and news pundits are going to call on him to drop out. And I'll admit, his path to the nomination is diminishing uh, it very rapidly. It sucks to say that, but it's true. Um, he's not mathematically eliminated, but it's getting to a point where it's very clear that um, the Democratic Party's base is just coalescing around Joe Biden because they believe the propaganda about him being more electable in spite of the fact that they agree with Bernie Sanders policies more. But regardless, you know, it seems like Bernie Sanders is not going to win based on th the trajectory that we're on. So if I'm Bernie Sanders and I hear these calls, what do I do? Um, I refuse to drop out. I commit to stay in to the convention at a minimum, but possibly beyond. Because here's the thing. They would never give Bernie Sanders this luxury if he were the presumptive nominee, right? Joe Biden said he would contest the convention if Bernie Sanders didn't get a majority of pledged delegates. And here we are in a situation where Joe Biden has not even secured a majority of pledged delegates. And there's already loud calls for Bernie Sanders to drop out. So if I'm Bernie Sanders, I'm saying absolutely not. I will not drop out. And I'll stay in all the way until November if I have to, because guess what? We're all dealing with the severity of COVID-19 and we're responding, I think, in a way that it recognizes the gravity of this situation. But there's another crisis that Joe Biden is refusing to address. Medicare for all. A Yale study just confirmed that 68,000 people die every single year due to a lack of health insurance. And that estimate is conservative because when you account for people who are underinsured, the number is probably far higher. So if I'm Bernie Sanders, I'm saying, look, you want me to drop out? I'll drop out. But I need a firm commitment, both in video form and in writing, that Joe Biden will introduce or tell Congress to introduce legislation that is my Medicare fraud bill. If he does that, then I'll drop out. And if he doesn't commit to that, then guess what? This is a crisis that so far at this point in time is worse than COVID-19. We have 68,000 Americans dying every single year due, due to a lack of health insurance. So I can't drop out right now because we need a president who is going to treat this crisis with the seriousness that it warrants. And Joe Biden isn't going to do that. So it looks like I'm going to have to stay in and run independent against Joe Biden and Donald Trump, because we can't not have a president who takes this issue seriously. So if I've got to stay in all the way until November, then so be it. Because for Joe Biden to assume the role as Democratic Party nominee and 
say he'd veto Medicare for all, that's unacceptable. So if he doesn't commit to Medicare for all, I drop out. Now, there's a couple of caveats here. First of all, Joe Biden, even if he committed to Medicare for all, that in and of itself isn't going to guarantee that we get Medicare for all. Of course, I wouldn't even believe him. He'd just be doing it because it's politically expedient in that situation. But the goal is to get him to not veto it at a minimum, right? At least sign it into law if Bernie Sanders, using his influence in the Senate, can somehow get it passed. And this is a long shot, but at the same time, we have to move the Overton window. We have to move the needle. We have to make sure that Americans know what's at stake. People are dying. They may not know anyone who died because they don't have health insurance. No access to health care whatsoever, but it could happen to them. So people need to realize the gravity of this situation. Now, I know that Bernie Sanders would never, ever threaten to run third party, and he doesn't have to, but he just has to make them think that he's willing to do that if Joe Biden doesn't concede on this one very important issue. And this is why the Republican establishment back in 2015 and 2016, they couldn't actually successfully rig it against Donald Trump in the way that they wanted to, because Donald Trump was playing hardball with them. He threatened to run independent. It's why they introduced that bogus loyalty pledge that they made him sign. And then I, I think right after that, he was saying, eh, maybe I'll still run independent. It just depends. So Bernie has got to play hardball. And I know that Bernie won't do this. He is too nice of a guy and he doesn't want to risk, you know, um, taking votes away from Joe Biden that would otherwise help defeat Donald Trump. And I get that. I empathize with that situation. He doesn't have to actually run third party, but he has to play hardball and really use the leverage that he has now. That's the thing that's so irritating. Like Bakari Sellers and uh, Jennifer Rubin, they're basically saying, go away, all the leverage that you have throw it in the garbage. Like, do you think that when Obama most likely made that call to Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar and Beto O'Rourke to come out and endorse Joe Biden, they did it just out of the goodness of their hearts? No, they were expecting something. Now, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a position in um, Joe Biden's cabinet. Maybe it's the promise to endorse Pete Buttigieg if he wants to run for governor of Indiana. I don't know what it is, but you don't give up your political leverage without getting something in return. So the fact that they would think Bernie would be stupid enough to do the same thing, these political hacks, that is, it's just inconceivable to me. No, Bernie needs to stay in as long as possible because he has a lot of leverage. He has a gigantic movement that Joe Biden and Democrats know they need if they want to win. And if you want to actually try to make a difference, Get Joe Biden to concede. Do not drop out unless he firmly commits both on video and in writing to the American people that he will tell Congress to introduce Medicare for all and put it on his desk. If he doesn't do that, then you've got to basically threaten to stay in the race indefinitely. Because, I mean, we have a crisis where thousands of Americans die every single year. Every single year in this country, multiple 9-11s are happening. I mean, what was it, like 3,000 people died on 9-11? 68,000 people are dying every single year, according to this Yale study. Now, you can basically say that the methodology in that study is flawed. You can doubt it. It's a peer-reviewed study, but I mean, like, even if we cut that number in half, 35,000 approximately, is that what you want to go on in this country? I think the American people don't want that to go on, hence why at the exit polls, they're overwhelmingly siding with Medicare for all, even in states where Joe Biden is winning. They just are prioritizing beating Donald Trump, and the mainstream media told them it's Joe Biden is more electable, and they're listening. So you've got to use this leverage, and I really hope that Bernie Sanders resists these calls for him to drop out, take the leverage that he has gotten and utilize it to do good for the country. I think he will try to do that in whatever way, but I just know that he's not going to play hardball as much as he should, and that's really unfortunate because he has a lot of political power and political capital currently, and he could really use that to potentially at least you know, shift the Overton window. I don't think he'd get any policy concessions that actually become codified into law, but to just move the rhetoric in the Democratic Party. Use that leverage to get them to stop attacking Medicare for all. Use that leverage to at least get them to commit to supporting Medicare for all, even if we don't believe them. I think that's a step in the right direction, and I think that Bernie Sanders is at least going to try to use it, uh, the leverage that he has, that is, in some way. So we'll just have to wait and find out.